Welcome to Tech Field Day, guys. This session is on NCS 50, 5700 router, our new model in the series. My name is Vincent Ng, technical marketing engineer for Cisco. Agenda for today, NCS 5700 is part of the current NCS 5500 series. I will first do a brief recap on the NCS 5500 portfolio and then introduce the two new NCS 57 line cards. For investment protection and easy migration, we support both NCS 57 line cards and older line cards to run in the same chassis with compatibility mode. After migration is completed, we could run in native mode with more enhancements. We will do a comparison of these two modes. NCS 5700 introduces 400 optic support, and we will talk about the 400 optics available today and on roadmap. We will also introduce the concept of direct ports and flex ports on these line cards and the flexible combinations of optics and breakout support on these line cards. Let's do a brief recap of NCS 5500. NCS 5500 was introduced more than four years ago and have a broad range of fixed and modular chassis form factors based on the Broadcom DNX family of MPU from Qumran MX, Jericho, Jericho Plus to the Jericho 2, which we'll be introducing today. This family now has 14 fixed chassis from 1RU to 2RU and three modular chassis with four, eight, 16 slots and 11 line cards today, nine of them based on Jericho and Jericho Plus and two of them will be introduced today based on Jericho 2. There is a key concept of base and scale versions in NCS 5500 for both fixed and modular chassis. The base version uses the internal databases on the NPU, such as LPM and LEM for storing prefixes, MAC addresses, and labels. And these databases are currently fixed in sizes. The scale version has an external TCAM for additional raw scale and increased it ACL and QoS scale as well. There are three modular chassis available with many common components such as raw processor, system controller, line cards, and power supply modules. Only the chassis itself, fan trays, and fabric cards are different for each chassis. For modular chassis, the line cards are inserted from the front horizontally and the fabric cards and fan trays are inserted from the back vertically. And we can call this an orthogonal design. So you can see that in this diagram, different chassis requires fabric cards and fan trays with different heights. The first generation fabric card is based on the Broadcom AFD 3600 fabric chip. It is a cell-based fabric. It requires six fabric cards per chassis for full capacity and redundancy. It supports line cards based on both Jericho and Jericho Plus. It is a single-stage fabric 
and basically provides a full mesh connections to all MPUs on all line cards on the chassis. The design is very simple. And just one fabric ASIC for the four slot chassis, two ASICs for the eight slot chassis, and six ASICs for the 16 slot chassis. So you can see that the only difference is on the height and number of ASICs. As we have mentioned, the fabric connections are very simple and with full mesh connectivity to all MPUs on all line cards of the chassis. In this example, the six MPUs of the line card will be connected in full mesh to all six fabric cards. And we will step through the fabric connections one by one. Zero. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And the full mesh connection is now completed. Right. We will now introduce the two new NCS 5700 line cards into the NCS 5500 family. A brief history on the MPU used it in NCS 5500. The earliest fixed chassis and line cards are based on the Qumran MX and Jericho. And then we have many more fixed chassis and line cards based on Jericho Plus and a large LPM version of Jericho Plus. Today, we will introduce Jericho 2. Jericho 2 is a new member of the DNX family from Broadcom. Based on 16 nanometer technology, it has two forwarding engines or cores per ASIC. Total performance is 2 billion packets per second with 4.8 terabits network interface bandwidth and 5.6 terabit fabric bandwidth. This MPU is 400 gigi optimized. So it is organized in units of eight by 50 gig service, which we call a PM50 or pot macro. Instead of fixed size databases such as LPM and LEM, as we have seen on Jericho Plus, the Jericho 2 introduces the concept of a single pool of resources called Modular Database, or MDB. It is capable of flexible allocation. We will have more details in the next section on Modular Database. Hi, Vincent. How does the uh, fabric bandwidth compare to previous versions of the, 50, the 55 models? Well, basically, your bandwidth, a uh, fabric bandwidth, has to support your network interface bandwidth. So, for example, if you look back to the previous generations, there you go on the uh, comparison between network bandwidth and fabric bandwidth. So, for example, if you look at Jericho Plus, you see the network bandwidth 900 gig, and the fabric bandwidth is 1.2 tera. Oh, so it has to be so it's large, it's just larger yeah. Yeah, it's, because it's a lot there, will be, there will be some overhead on the fabric. So you have to make some room for the overhead. Do we have further questions? And optionally, we could also support external TCAM. And the version supported by Jericho 2 is an enhancement called OP2. The OP2 TCAM not only can support higher route scale, it could also store counters so that it can do additional statistics.
Jericho 2 uses a new memory technology called HBM, or high bandwidth memory, for its external buffer. HBM basically stacks on top of the MPU package, and therefore it does not burn links on the PCB. HBM enables higher bandwidth with lower power consumption. And a total of eight gigabyte is supported and shared between the two cores. Jericho 2 also integrates 32 megabytes of on-chip buffer and 16 megabytes assigned to each core. As mentioned, Jericho 2 is 400 gig optimized with all 50 gig 30s. It has 96 by 50 gig 30s for network interface and 112 by 50 gig 30s for the fabric interface. This is a chart on current Jericho and Jericho Plus performance. Jericho 2 has increased PPS performance from about 800 million PPS to 2 billion PPS, which is about 2.5 times enhancement. In terms of bandwidth, Jericho 2 increases from 900 gigabits to 4.8 terabits, which is over five times better. As you may have noticed, the increase in bandwidth is higher than the increase in PPS, which is an optimization of the current trend of increasing packet sizes due to internet video. So I think you're implying here that the size of the packet doesn't really matter? The size of the packet, because the average packet sizes on internet is increasing. So for forwarding chip, it's better to optimize it for larger line rate packet sizes in order to fully utilize your bandwidth available on the chipset. All right, thanks. This is a chart on current Jericho and Jericho Plus route scale. With Jericho 2, without external TCAM, it could support roughly 2.5 million IPv4 prefixes, and it is larger than the 2 million prefixes of Jericho Plus with large LPM version. With external TCAM at FCS, Jericho 2 supports the same 4 million prefixes as the current Jericho Plus, with external TCAM. However, we could support much higher scale in future IOXXR versions. Let me introduce the first Jericho 2 based line card, NC57 24 DD. It is a baseline card without external TCAM, and it support 24 400 gig interfaces with QSIP-DD form factor on the front panel. We will talk more about 400 gig optic support and QSIP-DD form factor in the next section. It is using two Jericho MPU, and therefore supports a total of 9.6 terabit throughput. And this is a line rate for all 24 port of 400 gigi. This line card requires an upgrade to the chassis for second generation fabric cards and second generation fan trees. This is already available for eight slot and 16 slot chassis. The four slot chassis upgrade are on the roadmap.
total power consumption of this line card is about, say, 1,000 watts to 1,300. This is a simplified block diagram for the 24 DD line card. It has two Jericho 2 NPU. Each NPU is connected to 12 QoS FB DD ports. Each port is having 400 gig bandwidth. This is a second NPU with 12 QoS FB DD ports. And both NPUs are connected in full mesh to the fabric cast, and we have shown in the previous example. So the 24 DD line card architecture is very simple and basic. It is optimized basically for 400 gigi operation. This is the second Jericho 2 based line card, NC5718DD-SE. As the name implies, the dash SE meaning is a scaled line card with external TCAM. There are 30 QSFE DD ports on the front panel and support either 18 interfaces of 400 gigi or 30 interfaces of 200 gigi or 100 gigi. It is using two Jericho 2 MPU and supports a total of 70.2 terabits. The external OP2 TCAM is used for additional route scale and statistics. It requires an upgrade for second generation fabric card and second generation fan trace, which is already available for 8 slot and 16 slot chassis. Four slot chassis upgrades are on the roadmap. Total power consumption is about 1000 watts to 1400 watts. Quick question for you on this slide. Um, looking at the the first bullet point you have there about the different speeds that are capable and the number of ports that are able to be used. Are you able to intermix it all with the 400 gig and then the two and 100, or is it all or nothing on one function? There are a lot of combinations on this line card, which is more flexible than the 24 DD line card. Okay. As this line card is more optimized for sub 400 aggregation with a mix of 400, 200, 100, and even break out into 4x25 and 4x10. We'll have a lot of examples in the next sections when we discuss about the 400 optics and breakout options. All right, thank you. Vincent, what about uh, head of line blocking? Any problem here? These two line cards are line rate, so there's no head of line blocking. Okay, thank you. So there's no oversubscription. Some other NCS 5500 models do have oversubscription, but not on this two line card. This is a simplified block diagram for the 18DD line card. It has two Jericho 2 MPU. There are six KOS FPTD ports connected directly to one MPU. So it has 400 gig bandwidth and 12 flex pod pairs, each pod pair having a stack QS FPDD cages and connected to the MPU via a CDR with RGB or reverse gearbox functionality. The RGB CDR enables more flexibility in optics and breakout support. And as mentioned, we will have more details on this later section. It also has the external OP2 TCAM. And both MPU are connected in full mesh to the fabric card. So as you can see, the architecture of the 18DD line card 
is slightly more complicated than the 24 DD line card. So it is optimized for more flexibility in its optic support and breakout configuration support. We'll have a whole section on this support. For these two, Jericho line cards require the second generation fabric card. This card is based on the Broadcom AV 9600 fabric chip or Ramon, which is a cell-based fabric. It only supports the second generation fan trays and it has an incompatible connector with the first generation fan trays for protection against misinstallation. Both the second generation fabric cards and second generation fan trays are mandatory for the Jericho 2 line cards. The most important feature is backward compatibility with Jericho and Jericho Plus line cards. So we could mix all generations of line cards and operate on the same chassis. It is a single stage fabric and basically provides full mesh connectivity to all MPUs on all line cards on the chassis. Design is simple, again, just one fabric ASIC for the four slot chassis, two ASICs for the eight slot chassis, six ASIC for the 16 slot chassis. So only difference is in the height. So let us compare compatibility mode and native mode in Jericho 2. NCS 5700 has two operating modes. At FCS of iOS XR 702, we will support only compatibility mode, which we can mix Jericho to line cards with Jericho and Jericho Plus line cards on the same chassis. In future iOS XR versions, we will support native mode after all line cards are migrated to Jericho 2 or with new installations with only Jericho 2 line cards. Is that an efficiency um, measure there? To, is having everything the same Jericho 2 going to be more efficient in code version and memory consumption? Actually, it's more from a features point of view. We'll see it in the next slide about native mode enhancements. And as well with that then, is compatibility mode going away with the newer versions? It's not going away. It will be in parallel for a period of time because okay. a lot of customers we anticipated will be still using the current installations of Jericho and Jericho Plus line cards. We want to protect the investment. So if they were upgrading line cards over a period of time, they would still be able to continue with the newer code then, correct? Correct. All right, thank you. Yeah, so you already asked. It is to allow smooth migration of current NCS 5500 to higher bandwidth networks based on 400 gig. So you could protect your current investment on 100 gig while have an upgrade path to 400 gig. At FCS, Compatibility mode provides feature parity with Jericho Plus, iOS XR version 651 for peering and core feature sets only without layer two features yet, which is planned for future releases. But even in compatibility mode, there are some enhancements possible for the Jericho 2 based line cards, such as ACL permit counters without specific hardware profile or egress IPv6 ACL now do not need recirculation. And GPP, I'm sorry, BGP flow spec do not need recirculation. So these enhancements, enhancements are there even in compatibility mode.
native mode support only Jericho 2 line cards on the same chassis. It will provide all the enhancements possible for Jericho 2 NPU with appropriate future iOS XR releases. Some features under consideration are modular database profiles with flexible allocation. And we will introduce this concept in the next slide. ECMP FAC is now increased to 32K entries. It supports deeper label stack for segment routing and SRV6. There are more capabilities on egress passing and buffering for Jericho 2. Jericho 2 support VXLAND and also PM multicast and possibly cloud native PNG. So depending on the tables for the SRV6. Can you repeat your question? Uh, do you remember how many labels it can support for SRV6? Uh, can, can remember off the uh, top of my head now, it's like um, there's an enhancement from the current label stack uh, mm -hmm. to the Jericho 2. It's an increase of, I can remember off the top of my head, but uh, because it's having right. delivered and we're still in the oh. drawing board, but we will announce it when it's available in our documentation. Oh, yeah, so it is interesting Interesting to see here uh, bit indexed explicit application beer supports here because I think Jericho 2 here, right? Yeah, so, so this Peter here, can you hear me? So the label that's from program that actually could support up to 14, but a current SDK will be only support to 12. So when we launch in the native mode, the total label that will be 12. Okay, and uh, beer support comes with this chassis, it seems, because Jericho chips are there, right? Yes, only Jericho 2 is capable for beer. That's correct. Okay. Because the, yeah, thank you. the header lens be the case, yeah. So uh, do you remember how many uh, bit string here it supports? I, we, could, we could share offline, but we do have the data from the program to offer this one. We could keep it offline, but we did not sure. talk about my head beast. Um, maybe, we, we, maybe could go on, we could wrap it up a question later, okay? And let me check. Let, let's look at that. Sure. Okay, thank you, Vincent. Go ahead. More questions? I know this is an interesting topic. So all these, again, are in the drawing board. The hardware is capable to do a lot of stuff and the software will have face-by-face -face released to support these uh, features in our roadmap. Now let's talk more about modular database. We have mentioned that in current Jericho Plus, the internal databases such as LEM, LPM, and FAC are discrete and fixed in size. In Jericho 2, there will be a centralized pool of resources called modular database or MDB which allows flexible allocation of different resource type. So we're able to create profiles for different allocations for different use cases. Let's illustrate modular database concept with examples. This is an example for profile X, which requires more allocation of LPM. This is another example of profile Y, which requires more allocation of LEM. But you can see the allocation is from the same pool of resources. They're not fixed in their carving. So it gives us a lot of flexibility. For most users, they will be using a balanced profile with a balanced mix of layer two and layer three feature scale, such as IPv4, IPv6 prefixes, MAC addresses, and patch labels. But for layer three focused uses, 
they could use the L3 optimized profile, which increased LPM allocation, for example. And for layer two focus users, they could use a more layer two optimized profile with increased LEM allocation, for example. So this is the concept of modular data space profiles for different use cases. Now let's talk about optics. The single most important innovations in 400 gig optics is the QSFP DD form factor. It is based on the most successful form factor for 100 gig optics today. That is the QSFP 28. And we add a second row of pins to ensure backward compatibility with the vast amount of QSFP 28 optics already deployed today. It also enhances the 30 speed from max 25 gig to max 50 gig, therefore supporting up to eight links of 50 gig on the electrical interface. For 50 gig service, it also uses the new PAM4 encoding and a better RSFAC 544514 for error correction. So with these innovations, we are able to support the newer 400 gig optics So I press the slightly wrong button. So with these innovations, we are able to support the newer 400 gig and 200 gig optics, as well as all previous generations of 100 gig and 40 gig optics. Furthermore, different combinations on the number of series plus the series speed give us flexible breakout options for different types of optics. To illustrate, QSIP 56 DD can be broken out to 2 by 200, 4 by 100, and 8 by 50. QSIP 28 DD can be broken out to 2 by 100 and 8 by 25. QSIP 56 can be broken out to 2 by 100 and 4 by 50. QSIP 28 to 4 by 25. And QSFP plus to 4 by 10. Finally, QSFP DD support much higher power consumption. So for future optics, which may require power up to 20 watts, such as 400 gig ZR and ZR plus coherent optics, and the 100 gig ZR support. On the optical side, there are a whole new generation of 400 gig optics standard, both from IEEE and from MSA. Starting with 400 gig optics, instead of the current 25 gig wavelengths with NRZ encoding, it is migrating to 50 gig and even 100 gig wavelengths with PAM4 encoding in order to lower the number of lasers and complexity of the optics. Let us start by categorizing the cable types, such as copper AOC cables, multimode cables, and sigma cables. And each category may also have parallel or duplex optics. For passive copper, we have cables to about three meters. For active copper, we have cables to about 7 meters. And for active optical cables, we have cables of about 30 meters. For multimode optics up to 100 meters, we have SR4-BD running on four pairs of bidirectional fibers. And SR8 on eight pairs 
of multiple fibers. These two optics are parallel optics, meaning they could support breakouts. So the SR4BD supports breakout to 4 by 100 gig binder. And the SR8 support breakout to 8 by 50 gig SR. For single bore optics, the DR4 supports up to 500 meter. This one is also a parallel optics. And therefore, it can be broken out to 4 by 100 gig dash DR, FR, or LR, but limited to 500 meter. Please note, this breakout requires 100 gig wavelengths optics on the other end. If you did break out to longer distances, there are the 4 by 100 gig FR and 4 by 100 gig LR for 2 kilometer and 10 kilometer respectively. And these optics are designed for breakout applications. What were those distances again, Vincent? As you can see from below, it's 500 meter, 2 kilometer, and 10 kilometer. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> All right, for duplex optics, we have 400 gig FR4, which support up to two kilometers. This is based on CWDM technology of multiplexing four wavelengths in a single fiber. For 10 kilometer, we have two versions. The first one is 400 gig LR8. Second one is 400 gig LR4. The LR8 is based on LAN WDM of eight wavelengths. And the LR4 is using CWDM of four wavelengths. The LR8 will be available earlier, but we expect the LR4 will be cheaper when it comes out. For 40 kilometers, 80 kilometers or beyond, we will need the 400 gig ZR or ZR4 standard, which are coherent optics. These are still under development. And please refer to our other Cisco Live presentations on 400 gig coherent optics. These few optics are already available in 702 and others are still on the roadmap. So there are a lot of uh, optics coming on the 40 gig side. And another aspect of it is in some current deployments, there are a lot of current generation 100 gig optics, which are still using four by 25 gig NRC wavelengths. So there's a need for higher density support of these optics in the new line card. These optics are available in QSFP 28 DD form factor, supporting both multiple fibers and single mode fibers. And they can be multi, um, parallel or duplex. For multimodes up to 100 meter, we have the 2 by 100 gig SR4, which contains two instances of 100 gig SR4 optics in a single QSIP DD form factor. For single mode up to 500 meter, we have 2 by 100 gig PSM4, which contains two instances of 100 gig dash PSM4 optics in a single KSFE DD form factor. These two are parallel optics with four pairs of fibers each. So we require a high density connector on the KSFE DD front page. And we have chosen the MPO24 for that. For single move fibers up to two kilometer, we have the two by 100 gig CWM4. And for duplex optics up to 10 kilometer, we have the two by 100 gig LR4. 
These two are duplex optics. But again, the QSF PDD faceplate cannot fit the two duplex LC connectors. So we have chosen the more compact dual duplex CS connector. The 2 by 100 gig LR4 is already available. And the rest on roadmap. And as we're migrating for 225 gig wavelengths to 100 gig wavelengths, we will need a new generation of QSIP 28 100 gig optics supporting 100 gig wavelengths. These are mostly available in single mode fibers and duplex option. In this category, we have 100 gig DR for 500 meter. 100 gig FR for two kilometers, 100 gig LR for 10 kilometers. And for 80 kilometers and beyond, we will require another category of 100 gig ZL coherent optics, which are usually in QSFP DD form factor instead of QSFP 28, because we need higher power consumption for these coherent optics. All of these optics are still on the roadmap. This is a quick example of 400 gig DR4 breakout. Please note, this requires a new generation 100 gig wavelength optics on the KVSAP 20X side, such as the 100 gig DR. The DR4 optics uses MPO12 connectors for high density, four pairs of single mode fibers. And it connects to two, I mean four duplex LC connectors on the other end. It will also interrupt with 100 gig FR or 100 gig LR, but limited to 500 meters. This is a comprehensive table for 400 gig optics roadmap for the NCS 57 line cut for your reference only. And we are not going through them in detail now due to time. Please note that some of them are already available at FCS in Nixile 702 and others on the roadmap. Let us introduce the concept of direct port and flex port for the two Jericho two line cards. On the 24 DD line card, all 24 QSFP DD ports are connected directly to the Jericho two MPU, supporting 400 gig bandwidth individually. So each QSFP DD connectors connect to an octet of 8 by 50 gig series on the Jericho 2, which is also called a PM50 or port macro. On the 18 DD line card, six QSF DD ports are connected directly to the Jericho 2 MPU, supporting 400 gig bandwidth individually. And then, 12 flex pod pairs, each with QSIP DD stacked cages, are connected to single Jericho 2 PM50 and sharing 400 gig. Each pod pair is handled by CDR5 with RGB or reverse gearbox functionality. This CDR allows a more flexible combination of 400 gig and lower speed optics and breakout options. <laughs> Let's discuss for direct ports, each with individual 400 gigs, the possible optics 
and breakout options. Of course, it will be subject to appropriate optics availability and software releases. For KVS IPDD 400 gig optics, it can be broken out to 4x100 and 2x200. For QSIP 56, 200 gig optics, it can be broken out to 2 by 100 gig. For QSIP 28 DD, 2 by 100 gig optics, each individual 100 gig optics can be broken out to 4 by 25. For QSIP 28 100 gig ports, it can be broken out to 4 by 25. For KOSAP Plus 40 gig optics, it can be broken out to 4 by 10. So the support for the direct port is rather strict forward. Now for the flex port pairs. It is sharing 400 gig for the two KOSAP DD ports. So it is optimized for sub 400 gig, I mean 400 gig aggregation and it allows a higher density of low speed optics and more combinations of breakout options. Of course, again, subject to availability of the optics and software releases. There is a dependency on N and N plus one port on the flex port pair. If port N is using KOS FPDD 400 gig optics, it can be broken out to 4 by 100, 2 by 200, but port M plus 1 must be empty because the 400 gig bandwidth has been used already. If port N is QSIP 56, 200 gig optics, it can be broken out to 2 by 100 gig, and port M plus 1 can also be a QSIP 56. 200 gig optics. So you can see in this combination, we support two optics sharing a single 400 gig port on the Jericho 2. If port N is QSIP 28 DD, 2 by 100 gig optics, port N plus 1 can also be a QSIP 28 DD, 2 by 100 gig optics. Therefore, in total, we support a maximum of 400 gig optics, which is the older generation 4 by 25 gig NRZ optics. And it's very useful for current deployment. We have a lot of old generation type optics. If you have a lot of breakout and port N can be using QSFP 28 100 gig optics or QSIP plus 40 gig optics, each capable of breakout into 4x25 or 4x10. Port M plus 1 can also be in another QSIP 28 or QSIP plus optics doing breakout. So in total, you could have up to eight low speed breakout ports on a single Jericho 2 interface. So as you can see, the 18DD um, Lanka gives you much more flexibility in terms of lower speed aggregation and breakout. Let's do a more detailed illustration. This slide will illustrate the operation of 400 gig mode in the flex port pair. The CDR is operating in retirement mode without reverse gearbox. The 400 gig optics, after inserted into the KOS FPDD cage, it will be using the 400 gig AUI-8 8 times 50 gig electrical interface. The CDR will connect this 8 series from KOS FPDD two X30s on the Jericho 2 PM50. 
Jericho 2, we use the same 8 by 50 gig with 400 gig AUI-8 interface. And it will utilize one instance of 400 gig Mac. So in this case, one PM50 macro support one 400 gig optics. This is the basic use case. The CLI for this mode is shown here. And the other port must be empty because you already use up the 400 gig bandwidth. This slide shows the CLI. And after you apply this hardware module port range command, you can see that it automatically generates a 400 gig interface in software. Now we look at a more complicated example with the flex port pair operating in two times 100 gig mode. The CDL in this case is operating in reverse gearbox mode. The two by 100 gig optics after inserted into the Kirasepi DD cage, it will generate two instances of CAUI-4 electrical interface. Each is four by 25 gig. For the first instance of 100 gig optics, the CDR will use reverse gearbox to convert the four by 25 gig CAUI4 interface to two by 50, 100 gig AUI2 interface on the Jericho 2. And the Jericho 2 will also generate one instance of 100 gig Mac. So this is the first instance of 100 gig optics. For the second instance of 100 gig optics, the same process will repeat. Reverse gearbox into Jericho 2, 100 gig Mac. And then when you plug in a second QSAPTD 2 by 100 gig optics, it will be using two more instances of CAUI4. And the same process will happen with the third instance of 100 gig reverse gearbox to Jericho 2. The fourth instance reverse gearbox in the Jericho 2. So finally, we have four instances of 100 gig AUI-2 on the Jericho 2 and four instances of 100 gig back will be generated. So in this mode, for single Jericho 2 PM50, it is supporting four by 100 gig interfaces. The CLI for this mode is shown here. And you can see from this slide, after you commit the hardware module port range command with mode two by 100, four instances of 100 gig key interface will be generated. Well, we're coming to the end of our presentation. This is normally a PM slide, so I'm not gonna elaborate on this, but in conclusion, ANSYS 5700 provides higher capacity, higher density, and it provides TCO savings and investment protection. I think we welcome questions now. Or we still have about um, a few minutes left. Yeah, just one quick one. Uh, what's the positioning of the NCS versus the ASR in the service provider market? Peter, you'd like to take that? Yeah, absolutely. So 
Yes. <clears throat> You probably talk about ASR, right? So I'm sorry, the question, the NCS with the what, ASR? Or? With the ASRs. Okay, so you probably mentioned this ASR 9K. So ASR 9K is still positioned for the H portfolio. The NCS 5557 is continuing to drive the core building aggregation. So I think from the application wise and overall scalability in conjunction with the scalability, ASR 9K still have the rich portfolio, especially we have the Lightspeed, Lightspeed Plus. So Lightspeed, Lightspeed Plus just launched approximately half years ago. So this portfolio will continue to have to drive the another two to three years on ASR and IK for H. Uh, having said it, because I think there's one summary table, you see the events and show here. There's some feature probably have a certain overlapping when the Jericho 2 able to catch up the skill and feature functionality. So a lot, lot position wise, right? We still maintain the same. The NC5500 will be the core peeling, high scale aggregation, ASR 9K still be the edge. But again, what I'm saying, it really up to customer to decide, right? If you have a certain overlapping, definitely if the functional scale fall into that category, that will be okay. Yep. So right now we're looking at the NCS at the edge, the ASR 9K at the core. Are you eventually looking at the idea of the NCS being the whole portfolio or is that split strategic? I think right now we still try to split strategically. Yes. Okay, thanks just, very much. Yeah, no problem. And I just checked, right? The beer is 24K, 24K beer ID from the Brocom data sheet. So you need to keep in mind, right? When Brocom say 24K, is not direct associated with when we launch will be 24K because you need to also depend on the SDK readiness, software development. So from the hardware wise, the beer set is the, the beer ID total 24k. This is from Howard Resource. So when we implement, we'll give you the more detail from the overall scale able to support. Cool, thank you.